Hey everyone, Santad here. So I was supposed to record the Elemental Longsword video today, but it looks like I have a power outage. So rather than holy wait, I thought I would quickly record some stuff on my phone and my laptop with a loss of my battery, uh, and basically just to show you something really cool that I found uh, while preparing the Elemental Longsword video, which is the best longswords in the game, on average, in general. Uh, so every other video I talked until now was just about the raw longswords and the ones that do the most raw damage. Uh, but if you take into account the elemental damage, which one does the most? Uh, so I'm going to go in more detail about my methodology in the next video. But basically I want a longsword build that has Wirebug Whisperer 3, at least Speed Sharpening 2. And what I do is I basically calculate how much elemental damage you're going to use in um, every single... Um, playstyle against every single monster. It's a lot of detail. There's a lot of spreadsheets. Um, and basically, once I have all of that, I calculate the average damage that each build does. So, without further ado, which are the best longswords that are on this sheet? So basically, I have, oops, spoilers, I have the three playstyles, so Tempered Spirit Blade along with um, Sacred Sheath combo, Helmbreaker with the Ice Spirit Slash, and Sakura Slash with uh, sacred Sheath combo. And the worst longsword, well, at least ranked number four, 13, unlucky, is the Abyss Bringer Blade. Um, so this longsword is very, very good in certain situations. It has really high elements, but on average, you can't really rely on the element and you need some raw. Uh, number 12 is the Abyssal Flicker. Uh, I'm very confused right now because a lot of people seem to be saying that Abyssal Flicker is good again. Um, I thought I debunked that in the first video, but it seems to have made a resurgence. But yeah, no, um, Abyssal Flicker on average does less damage than pure raw. Uh, if you try and use the Abyssal Flicker on the Toadiversary, you actually do more damage. Um, just So I'll just quickly show you that spreadsheet specifically. So here I have the Toadiversary. Oh, this is going to be very zoomed out for you. So we have the Toadiversary um, over there. So Toadiversary has really, really big hit zones. Uh, it has 100 raw and 30 for each element. So if you try different... Um, if you try... So the relative impact of the element is going to be really, really, really high. So basically, the little bit of element that it has, um, the little bit of element the Abyssal Flicker has, will cause it to do more damage um, to the Totiversary than a pure raw build. But overall, um, the Abyssal Flicker is not good at all. Um, indeed, the weapon that does the most damage uh, to the Totiversary would be the... Uh, let me scroll over to the right. Did I scroll too far? No, I didn't will be... Duh, duh, duh. Oh no, what did I do? I zoomed so way too much. The weapon that does the most damage to the Toadiversary is going to be the... <laughs> this is a very big spreadsheet. The, vol the Volcanic Apocalypse, the <laughs> Magma Aldridge Longsword. Uh, so yeah, it's not very... Mr. Vicar is not very good, like, at all. Uh, it's at least ranked. 12, and I haven't ranked every longsword, so it's at least the 12th best longsword. So you can consider that. You might be above average. Uh, number 11 is the Red Flash. Uh, this is the Valshrex longsword, really good elements, really good sharpness. And number 10 is the Sunderer. So this is the pure roll longsword. Uh, this is really, really interesting, because in the previous games, because of how strong raw was, um, basically the best raw weapon is the best general used weapon. In this game, that is not the case. Uh, because the elemental damage that the longsword does is really, really high. So on average, you can do better, more damage with other weapons. Uh, like, for example, number 9, which is the Flicker uh, Blizzard Slash. Now, this is also a bit where the um, damage style comes in. So, for example, the Tempered Spirit Blade uh, style does less elemental damage than the other styles. So in this case, the Sunder is still better. But for other play styles, Flicker Blizzard Slash. This is the Aurora Somnicamp Longsword is going to be better. Uh, moving down the list, we have number eight, uh, the Volcanic Apocalypse. So this is the Magma Album Drum Longsword. Number seven, the Street Scythe. <laughs> this is a random dragon. I think it's made from the Sinister Cloth items, which you get from Impalicos. So this one's pretty good. Uh, and next up is Deora's Storm, the Cushel Deora Longsword. Now it's worth mentioning that until this point, the damage difference on average is only about 1%. Uh, it's not significant, not very significant on average. Uh, against specific monsters, against monsters that are weak to a certain element, the damage is much, much higher. Like, can be up to, like, plus 15%, plus 20%, plus 30% damage. 
But on average, if you just want to use one long sword against every monster in, for example, a multi-monster hunt, uh, these do, would do pretty good damage. But with that, let's get to top five. Uh, number five is the Street Scythe. Um, again, oops, I think, I guess there are different builds. I, I didn't think about that properly. Anyway, ignore that. I think this is the raw damage build, whereas the higher Street Scythe will be the elemental damage build. Uh, so let's bring all the numbers back down. This is really off the cuff, and I'm afraid my battery's gonna die. So let's keep going. Uh, number four, the Lowenschwert. Lowenschwert? Lowenschwert. Um, which is the Aginath Longsword. Um, this one has a really high raw, relatively small damage, and that's what we're going to start to see. We're going to start to see, perhaps, weapons with higher raw and relatively lower um, element. And you can see that in the standard deviation column, uh, which is basically the difference between... Um, which is a function of the difference between the maximum damage you can do to certain monsters and the minimum. So this one's relatively small. Um, the only one that's smaller is the Sunderer, which is pure raw, and the Abyssal Thicker, which is not good. Um, number three, the Frost Velt. Uh, this is the generic Ice Longsword, uh, and I like it because it actually looks really, really cool. So yeah, the generic Ice Longsword is actually really, really good um, on average. Number ten is the Oppressor's Abyss, and this is where it starts actually getting really significant because the Oppressor's Abyss not only has a really high raw, but also a really high element. Um, I believe the Oppressor's Abyss has, by default, 10 hits of purple on average. Uh, when you're doing raw, that 10 hits of purple isn't a big difference, it's about 5%. Here I'm calculating on average over 50 hits. For element, that bit of purple is very, very important, but for raw, it doesn't really matter. So this is so these calculations are assuming 50 hits, so we're doing 10 hits of purple and 40 hits of white, and in that case, the Oppressor's Abyss is still really, really good. Uh, if you sharpen frequently, for example, if the monster moves, um, and then it gets even better. But the best longsword in the game, on average, is drum roll, da, 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 the shock strike plus. Uh, this is the Toby Kadachi longsword. Um, it's not much difference from the Oppressor's Abyss, but it is significantly better, at least especially for the tempered uh, playstyle. But yeah, so for general use, the shock strike is the best monster in the game. I don't recall their sharpness off the top of my head, um, but yeah, it's it's the Shock Strike. So if you want to just build one longsword and do as much damage as possible, uh, yeah, it's the Toby Kodachi longsword. Um, the error is relatively low as well, actually. Um, if you just want something that is highly consistent, the Sunder is the way to go, but on average, the Shock Strike is higher. Anyways, that's all. I'm going to post this once my power gets back on, or I'm going to go to sleep and we'll see. Um, and the proper builds will come out tomorrow. Um, see you all next time. 50 hits of sharpness. Uh, it has 50 hits of sharpness, which is pretty good. Um, yeah, it's also in part that a lot of monsters are slightly thunder weak, more so than other elements. So that's why those two thunder longswords are, on average, better than all of the other ones. Anyway, bye-bye.